Morning HMS 7, great to see everyone back here on a Wednesday. Again, the focus of our jumpstart are the seven habits of highly effective teenagers, adults, any walk of life, any time you could practice these habits. And again, habits are things we repeatedly do, things that we do over time continuously. The reason we go over these habits three times a week, we reflect on them and review, is because habits take time to develop. You can develop good habits just as you can develop bad habits. We're coming out of spring break. I'm sure it was nice for everyone to get recharged, but I'm gonna guess that many of us didn't get enough sleep. We stayed up too late, probably didn't eat right, ate junky, probably didn't exercise enough. Those are three things that you can develop from a habit, which is number seven that we'll get to in the month of April, sharpening the salt. Spend time, go to sleep, have a good bedtime, get some sleep, eat right, put some color in your, in your food, some green, some orange, some red. Don't just do one color, sprinkle it out. And then exercise, get out and move. But again, I'm getting ahead of myself. Those seven habits, I want you to think about the six that we have been talking about. Think about how many you can remember what they are about here over the next 20 seconds and I'll review them. So it's a bit of a formative review in your head. I want you to think about at least four, if not all six of the habits that we have covered throughout our jump starts. Most important one, number one is always being proactive. When you run into a problem, you go find a solution. That isn't, this is too hard, I quit. This is, this is challenging, and I'm gonna put my head down and get to work until I figure it out. I'm proactive, I find a solution to my problem. I ask questions when I need help. I search for answers when I need help. Put first things first, prioritizing. Again, think about a big rock. Your number one priority when you walk into this building is to receive an education. In that process, and that just isn't academic, that's socially, that's emotionally. That's interacting with your peers when you're here in this building, that's education. Interacting with them appropriately, keeping your hands to yourself, being kind to one another. That's the big rock when you walk in here, educating yourself, interacting positively with your peers and with the adults but first things first each and every day begin with an end in mind hopefully that end is being successful put your stake in the ground we had many historical examples of people that had an end goal continue to have an end goal for yourself to success begin with that each and every day number four think win-win that's a helping others philosophy a philosophy that there's abundance of life out there the competition is fun and can be healthy when it's done the right way. Competition is fun and healthy and done in the right way when you're looking to be the best possible person you can be. If you competed with yourself each and every day and nailed these seven habits, you would become a very, very successful person. If you're on a sports team, an athletic team, competing yourself and working with the teammates around you to be the best you can possibly be is healthy. Again, the word competition stands for strive together. That's what a win-win philosophy is, striving together to make the world and our building and our city, town, a better place. Number five is our listening habit. I quiz a lot of people about their goals and how they want to get better from the day before, and many of them say focus. Number five is all about learning how to focus better. Make eye contact, paraphrase, ask questions. Listen with your heart, empathize with people. We're on synergy right now, that's teamwork, working together. Always want you to think of that flock of ducks or geese, however you want to look at it, flying. Again, they fly faster together than they do individually. And the lead duck, when it gets tired, it just sounds it out and it floats to the back and someone takes its place so that the flock can get there a little bit faster. Again, they fly about 72% faster. Think about that. Sharpening the saw, we'll get to. Our example of synergizing today is your own building, HMS 7. Again, how can we work together, take our differences to cooperate with one another? How can we find a better way of working together with each and every person? Great example is our pledge drive that we're launching right now. You'll be hearing about this in your science classes today. A number of ways we can kick that off. All those proceeds go into a student enrichment account, which we use to pump back into this building to help enrich or make the experience here even better. It 
It's a great example of synergy. Lots of us getting together, competing as pods to try to raise money to go back into this building, and then we use that to help do fun things for everyone in this building that they can enjoy. It's a great example of synergy. We'll be launching that today in your science classes. Lastly, those synergy reflection sheets, this is the last day of this. Truly appreciate those of you that have taken the time. Again, these are ways to hold ourselves accountable. You don't need to fill them out just one time. You can fill them out multiple times as you come up with different examples of how you have practiced the habit of synergy. These reflection sheets, again, are about practicing a habit we want to improve upon. Lastly, as we close out here, we'll be moving on to sharpening the saw next week. When we get into that following week, there will be another reflection sheet that will come out to your teachers that they can put into your hands so you can just reflect on sharpening your saw. We love you guys. Great to see you back here on a Wednesday.